Sonos recently added AirPlay 2 support to the Beam soundbar. And with more features coming down the pipeline, we thought it'd time to take a look at how it worked with our Apple TV. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and we have the white Sonos Beam. It also comes in black, but we opted for white so that it matches our white HomePod. There really is a ton to unpack here, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We'll walk you through what's in the box, how setup process goes, what you can do with it, include a sound test, and wrap it all up at the end. Compared to the Play Bar, the Sonos Beam is way smaller. It comes in at just above 25 inches wide, which will work on most TVs, including those down to 32 inches. Sonos also recommends this for small to medium rooms, and in our medium-sized townhome, we felt that was about right. When it was cranked all the way up, it was definitely too loud, but we kept it just above mid-volume for comfortable movie watching and music listening. Everything needed for the Sonos Beam is included in the box, from the Beam itself, to the getting started guide, to a few different cables. As far as the cables go, they do include an HDMI, and the HDMI is important because they use HDMI ARC, which stands for Audio Return Channel. If your TV supports this, which a lot of the modern ones do, it makes it really easy to get set up and going. You simply plug it in and audio routes through that ARC channel rather than having to plug in a separate audio cord. If you don't have that, they still include an optical audio adapter that works with that HDMI cable so you can still use standard optical audio out. And of course, the power cable to get this thing going. A few things you don't see is a remote, which you would normally expect with a lot of sound bars, but you shouldn't expect with really any Sonos product, or an ethernet cable. So if you wanna plug this in wired to connect to your network, you're gonna to have to provide one of those on your own. As far as the aesthetics go, we're really a fan. As an extremely simple design, the buttons are minimalistic touch buttons there on the top, and a fabric wraps around the front and the sides. It's very simple and should fit in to most rooms. It's definitely not too large, and even on the small side, but luckily you can add things like an amp and rear wireless speakers to create a full surround setup if you want to. The buttons on the top, all touch sensitive, work very easily, play pause in the middle with volume up and volume down on either side. If you connect this over Wi-Fi, which we expect most people will, you are just slightly limited. It supports wireless B, G, and N networks, but not wireless AC. We didn't notice any problems with Wi-Fi connectivity or speed, but it is something to take into consideration. Along the back, you have your standard set of ports, including the power port there on the left, the 10100 Ethernet there in the center right, and the HDMI ARC input there on the right-hand side. If you have ARC on your TV, setup is dead easy. You simply connect everything together, plug it into your TV. On the back of ours, it specifically said HDMI 2, perhaps, and then it had in parentheses ARC, so we knew which output to use for our soundbar. It does limit you as far as HDMI ports on the back of the TV, but that was only a minor consideration because we had four available and it wasn't a big deal. If you don't have ARC, however, it may take a little bit longer to get things configured. You may have to jump into the Sonos app and go into settings to configure it to work with your remote and make sure that it's synced up properly with what's happening on the TV. It isn't a particularly painful process, but it is something to be aware of. Once we had everything configured properly, this thing worked like a dream. Whenever we would use our Apple TV to wake the Apple TV and our television set, the beam would also come on. There was a minor delay before the actual signal went from the Apple TV to the television to the beam itself and for it to actually fully turn on, but it wasn't something we were worried about. A lot of the control of the Sonos beam is done through the Sonos app, just like really any other Sonos product. The first tab is called My Sonos, which houses all of your favorites. The second tab over allows you to browse all of your different music sources, the center is rooms where you have any different Sonos appliances already set up. We have the standard search and more and settings and all that over on the right hand side. Aside from using our TV or our Apple TV remotes to control the volume, it can also be done through the app. Aside from using our TV to control the beam, we used AirPlay and even the integrated Apple Music. It only took a second and then we had our entire Apple Music library available to stream directly to the beam without having to use AirPlay. Aside from Apple Music, there are a ton of other music services that you can tie to your Sonos Beam, and any Sonos player for that matter. There's Deezer, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, Spotify, Amazon Radio, Audible, Dash Radio, Google Play Music, Last.fm, Mix Music, Napster, Pandora, Plex, Pocket Cast, Radio.com, Radio Disney, SoundCloud, Tidal, and so many more. That's one of the things we love about the Sonos Beam. 
they have this mentality of if you can't beat them, join them. That's where they support so many music services. They support Amazon Alexa voice control. They support working from your TV. They support AirPlay and AirPlay 2 and feature the rarely seen Apple Music Direct integration. These are all amazing things for an Apple user because it really gives you variety and versatility in how you listen to your music. Right now, you can add that Alexa voice control, but that's really it. In the future, Sono says they're adding things like Siri integration as well as Google Assistant, but right now, those aren't there. So if you want another Alexa connected device, then this will fit that bill. Out of the box, the Sonos Beam sounded amazing, but it got even better after we used the True Play tuning, which involved a lot of waving our phone around. We even went in and could customize the sound just to our liking. Just as with other AirPlay 2 speakers, the Sonos Beam can show up inside of the Home app, but at the moment, you really can't do too much. It just shows it there, and you can't play or pause like you can with the HomePod. We're really pulling for some Apple improvement here, where AirPlay 2 HomeKit compatible speakers can be included in scenes and triggers to do a whole lot more than they can now. Even though they don't do much in the Home app, you can still control them from Control Center. They show up inside of AirPlay just like with any other speaker. So in this case, we tap on the top here, tap on the AirPlay icon, and any of the AirPlay 2 speakers with the circle by the side because we can select multiple of them. So I can choose both my HomePod and my Sonos Beam and my Libertone Zip to cast audio from my phone simultaneously. That's great because you're not limited to the Sonos ecosystem. Now let's go ahead and have a quick listen. It may not sound like much when recorded and compressed, but honestly, this fills the room and sounds amazing. One of the best sounding soundbars that we've ever got to try out. And with all the additional features packed into it, this certainly makes it a winner. Overall, this thing has a fantastically compact design, amazing sound, and is easy to sit up using HDMI Arc. It doesn't work great with home theaters, and there is no Dolby Atmos, but otherwise, is one of the best soundbars we've ever tested. Get yours at the link below. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.